Hello, welcome to DOS Box Demystified Part 4. This is our sound choices episode. Going to be a lot of sitting back and listening today. Just like with video options, the game will often tell you what audio options it supports, uh, either when you start it up or in the setup program. But if you don't know what any of these do, you might be at a loss to what one to pick. The first and most primitive type of audio is the PC speaker. Uh, it came bundled in like the case of computers back then with the IBM 5150. Uh, in the beginning, it's very bleepity bloopity. Uh, most PCs had a PC speaker up until 2000. Most games support it, but you might not like the sound of it. It's pretty shrill at points, but uh, here's an example. Well, after that funness, they invented the Tandy 3 voice, which is like a better PC speaker. Uh, it can do three simultaneous sounds, but it still sounds pretty bleepity bloopity, if you ask me. But it is a noticeable improvement, as we will see in this example. Who can save us from the bleepity bloopity but the Canadians with the AdLib Music Synthesizer card? It's an actual card that would go on your PC. It's very music based and it doesn't have a lot of sound effect options, although some games will use it for that. But it kind of sounds like a Sega Genesis, as we will see in this example. And now we move along to the big boy, the Sound Blaster. A Sound Blaster will do everything that an ad lib will do, but it also will do digitized sounds, so you can have sound effects or voices in your game. Sound Blaster is actually a line of cards, it's not just one card. They kept improving them over the years. Uh, a lot of games will just have an option for Sound Blaster, but later ones will want you to specify what Sound Blaster you have, and I've listed them there in the order from their most primitive to their most advanced. Uh, the general rule here is if a game supports it, pick the most advanced one that you can. And here's an example. The planet Arrakis, known as Doom. Land of Sand. Home of the Spice, Melange. The Spice controls the Empire. And the next one you'll see a lot of is General MIDI. Uh, you can think of it as a music upgrade for the Sound Blaster. And instead of the Sound Blaster playing those songs directly with its OPL chip, uh, it will play them on whatever MIDI device that you would like. Uh, MIDI is a standard, it's not a piece of hardware, so depending on what's playing that music, it might sound radically different. Uh, Windows itself will simulate MIDI just fine, but back in the day, these were played with MIDI modules. Uh, pictured there is a Roland SC55 MIDI module. Uh, it sounds usually pretty nice because they are basically the guts of professional synthesizers, uh, condensed into a box that your computer can interface with. And here's an example of General MIDI with Sound Blaster. In ancient Persia, there lived a sultan who had an only daughter. 
whose beauty was like moonrise in a clear heaven. Now it happened that the Sultan left his kingdom to fight in a foreign land. In his absence, the princess fell in love with a young traveler who climbed the palace wall to see her. This did not please the Sultan's Grand Vizier Jafar, who meant to marry the princess himself. And all that might have seemed like a lot, but there's really only three eras of time you got to worry about. Uh, in the early times, it was PC speaker. Uh, from 84 to 89, you've got the 1083 voice and the ad lib. And after that, it's pretty much all Sound Blaster all the time, either with or without the general MIDI. So as you go through and explore games, you're going to see other options in the menus that uh, are less common. Uh, the first one is the Disney Sound Source, which was like a box that would plug into your printer port. And it would play sounds that way, uh, digital files. Uh, it sounds a lot like a Sound Blaster, but not as good. Uh, DOSBox does support it. If you would like to choose that, you can. Uh, Gravis Ultrasound is another one. It's also is kind of like a Sound Blaster, but it's more crisper. A lot of people think it sounds better, but there's not a lot of games that support it. Uh, DOSBox will support it, but it takes an advanced configuration to get it going. And since it's not used very much, uh, I'm not going to cover it here, but uh, I might do a lesson on that in the future. Uh, there's AdLib Gold. DOSBox doesn't do this one, but uh, AdLib having its thunder stolen by Sound Blaster tried to make a comeback with the AdLib Gold. And it sounds great, but there's only a handful of games that support it. And again, DOSBox doesn't, so we're not going to go over that. And then there's the Roland MT32, which DOSBox absolutely does support. Uh, it's a MIDI device, but it's not a general MIDI device. So if you try to play MT32 music through the general MIDI port, uh, it'll come out all weird and gross. Uh, doing it right will take an advanced configuration, which I absolutely will make a lesson about at a later date. But next time what we're going to do is find out how to locate and use setup utilities to configure these games to use the options that we just learned about. Uh, if you like what you just heard, you think I did an okay job, give me the like and subscribe. I'm doing the YouTube thing, so your help is very much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next part.